Okay, welcome. My name is Robin Falanchek. I am the Assistant Collection Manager for the Naval History and Heritage Command Curator Branch at the Collection Management Facility in Richmond, Virginia. Here we take care of over 300,000 artifacts for the U.S. Navy, along with the other 10 museums that have their own collections. Um, what's so important about this building is that not until 2015 did we have this collection under one roof. We originally had them at three different facilities, so it is a very big deal that we have them all under this one roof where we can catalog, photograph, and take care of the collection properly. Today we're going to be doing an artifact spotlight on some of those artifacts with Dave Manning, our curator. Take it away, Dave. Hi, I'm Dave Manning. I'm the curator of Small Arms and Ordnance for the Naval History and Heritage Command. Uh, and we're here with you today to talk about some artifacts that belong to Seaman First Class Peter Paul Michelato, who was a sailor aboard USS New Mexico the battleship BB-40 uh, during World War II. So Peter Paul Mecheletto uh, was a first-generation Italian. Uh, his dad originally came from Italy. Um, he was from Montana. Uh, he entered the Navy in 1944. Um, and after going through training, uh, he was assigned to the battleship USS New Mexico. Uh, at the time, in 1944, the New Mexico had been taken out of service and it was actually getting uh, upgraded and repaired at um, the Puget Sound Navy Yard, and one of the objects that we have here is a small booklet that Micheletto obviously got at Puget Sound Navy Yard, and it uh, features calendar on the inside for both 1944 and 1945. He was there in 1944 while the ship was undergoing repair, uh, and that's typical of the kind of thing that a lot of sailors would have gotten, a small guidebook that tells you various information about the Navy Yard while you're there. Um, one of the other objects that we have here from Micheletto is a whistle. Now, a whistle might seem like a rather odd thing for a sailor to carry, but these typically were attached to the life preservers or the life jackets that they wore. Uh, and the reason for that is when they fell in the water, it might be very difficult for them to be seen from a board ship. But if you give them a whistle, it gives them some type of signaling device. And it's more likely that they might be heard, the whistle might be heard rather than them shouting. And we also have Micheletto's hats, or Dixie Cups, as they're popularly known. Uh, we have the standard white hat, which was typically worn with the uh, white uniform, both undress and dress white, as well as uh, the working uniform, the dungarees and the chambray shirt. And we also have another version of the Dixie Cup that's a, a lot more unusual, and it's a blue Dixie Cup. And this was designed specifically to be worn with the dungaree uniform, which of course is blue. Uh, and originally, a lot of sailors would dye their white Dixie cups blue to match the uniform, and eventually the Navy caught on and they started producing these and issuing them to sailors. They were really only worn for a very short period of time during World War II, and after the war, the Navy went back to standard white. Another item we have, which is rather interesting, is this uh, training device right here, which is to train sailors on how to use Morse code or how to communicate with a signal light using Morse code. And I have a more modern version of it here where I can actually demonstrate to you how it works. Now you have a key on the back that shows you what the various dots and dashes are to represent the letters for Morse code. And the way this works is you simply squeeze it and it simulates the shutters on the signal light opening and closing. So you can practice and learn how to do Morse code using a signal light. Seaman Micheletto has the distinction of not only serving aboard USS New Mexico during World War II, but he was also wounded in the chest and survived. And we have, as part of the collection, the fragment of metal that struck him. And you can see on this that it actually has a small fragment of fabric stuck to it that believe, we believe may have been Micheletto's chambray shirt that he was wearing during the battle. Now this event took place on 6 January 1945. New Mexico was providing gunfire support for the invasion of Luzon in the Philippines and it came under intense kamikaze attack and one of the kamikazes actually struck the bridge of the ship which killed the commanding officer and 29 other members that were on board the ship. Uh, it also wounded about 87 other members of the crew, including Micheletto. Now, for this, Micheletto was awarded the Purple Heart, and we also have his Purple Heart as part of the collection, which is typically awarded to service members who are either wounded or killed during, the, during wartime. Micheletto's collection is important to us, the Naval History and Heritage Command, because it, it enables us to tell the story of a typical American sailor 
which would also be representative of a typical American, since the majority of service members in, in the Navy, as well as the other services, are normally average Americans. This is especially important during World War II, since the vast majority of people who served in the military during the war were draftees. So they were drawn from all walks of life, from all parts of the country. And they really can tell the story of the fabric of this country, especially in the case of Micheletto, who was a first generation American. His father was an immigrant. Uh, it really is encapsulates uh, a large portion of what it is to be an American. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate being able to, to bring Navy history to you. And if you'd like additional information, please feel free to visit our website at history.navy.mil. And we hope to see you next time on the Artifact Spotlight.